Hi, I'm Beth. I'm one of the curators working with In Between Time, and today I'm meeting with Jermaine uh, to talk about his involvement in the mammalian diving reflex work that's been going on. Uh, did you want to start by briefly introducing yourself? So, as you said, I'm Jermaine. I uh, worked with the mammalian diving reflex before, about five years ago, on the analog version of uh, my walks. And um, I'm into art and gaming. I've done a little bit of th uh, theatre performing around the country, uh, up in Lincolnshire and stuff. Yeah. And uh, that's the short and sweet of it. Yeah. Fantastic, thank you. So, obviously you've been part of this before, uh, but what drew you to being involved again in this year's iteration? I think the interesting part was the focus on lockdown, which I thought I thought it was interesting because I don't have a particularly unique perspective on it. I feel like I feel like my experience was very boring, but I also feel like that's very, I hope at least, that what people feel from that is a very reassuring sense of sometimes there's just not much you can do about it. There's not much you can do and that's okay. And I, I hope that comes across. I bet it will. Uh, did you know much about working with 360 film before? And if not, sort of what have you learned through this process? I didn't know much about 360 film itself. <laughs> I've done a little bit of like 180 and stuff like that, but not, it's very, it's 360 film when I'm watching it back and I'm looking at the stuff, I've, it's a lot more personal and very much all encompassing, which is, I guess, very much self definitive in that sense. But um, it was very much, it was very different. I, I've played a lot of VR games, I have a VR headset, all that sort of stuff, and it captures that same feeling of immersion mm -hmm. and really just, there's just nothing to hide. That's interesting. I look forward to like seeing that come out, I think, in the film. Um, obviously, because we've been in lockdown, you've had to work with the whole team remotely. You were saying like you've not really met until now. What was that like, working remotely? Was it something that you were used to at all? Um, to a certain extent, yes, because all my university lectures have been yeah. over Zoom or um, Teams, uh, Microsoft Teams. However, the, there's a lot more interaction in this um, than I was used to previously. And it led to, since I do a lot of gaming online and spend a lot of time, it feels much more similar to a standard relationship to me than I think it would for most people. Yeah. <laughs> what did you enjoy most about shooting in 360 for this project? Um, I think the thing I enjoyed most was also the thing I disliked most, which was when I was filming something, I was acutely aware of the fact that no matter where I was, I was never off camera. There is no stepping behind the camera, collecting your thoughts and then continuing. You're just always on camera. Yeah. And yeah, I think that is both my favorite and least favorite part of it. <laughs> I thought I didn't know it would be the same, to be honest. <laughs> Um, what has it been like collaborating between yourself and then the whole team for this project? Was it different to the previous one? It was. Um, it was a little bit different because uh, in the in the previous one, I think a lot of the other night walks, it's very much a one sole collaborative effort that's all happening at the same time, which I hope or I think the end product will mostly feel quite like that but from the creation standpoint it's very different and mm -hmm. is kind of disjointed and it was interesting because pardon me getting to see everyone else's um work was very different because it, narratively and in the, in the ideas are very different because everyone has very different experiences of lockdown this is much more personal than um previous nightmares it ended up having a very um different experience yeah. and a very new experience. Uh, oh, so how do you, I don't know whether you've thought about this, how do you think though that the audience might be affected by the work? How might it impact them? I hope that people will get a very really personal experience from this, like a small glimpse into people's lives during the time because I myself, like I said, had a very boring time and you know, you get that sort of personality. It's, I don't go out much, I don't do lots of like different things that I stay in, I, I clean the house and I play games and that's been me during lockdown and I hope that that's, some people can relate to that and I also hope that some people won't and will get a glimpse into somebody else and obviously it'll be different again for Alka and for Chris because we're all three very diverse people.
Yeah, I think that will definitely come out in the uh, in the in the film. I'm looking forward to it a lot. Um, sort of a sort along a similar vein. How do you feel reflecting on the pandemic has affected you? So yeah, because you've had to do it quite extensively for this mm. project. Really thinking about it, I, I found um, that the pandemic. I think didn't affect me as much as many people. I mean, it, it does in the fact that part of the reason why I was so set and happy staying at home was due to some statistical stuff to do with people with more melanin in their skin essentially having a higher chance of having long COVID and dying. It was, it was I don't know if they've actually done any definitive research, but it was to do with like vitamin D deficiencies and stuff. But that whole idea of staying in and the idea that I, it didn't, it wasn't too bad on me, but I know for a lot of people it was really bad and like seeing friends and stuff who like just couldn't wait to be outside and see people like physically and I just didn't feel that as much as most people. And I feel that that was, that was a lot of my reflection, that and learning to work and have a very enclosed space, not being able to like go to different spaces, not being able to effectively go to like the university library and things like that, that was like, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, I bet. Yeah, it's that. Uh, yeah, being in somewhere really, really small for the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> even if you like your own company, it's a whole different relationship. Uh, so, a bit of a forward-thinking question: What kind of art or projects might you want to work on in the future? Would you work with Romanian Diving Reflex again on more projects, or would you do your own? I would always love to work with Mammalian Diving Reflex and Darren. The type of work that they aim to do and the interesting projects they come out with always blow my mind. And it's one of the few, like, more art space, like, it's one of those things that's not, like, super in the mainstream. It's more of, like, an artsy space pro uh, like, they do a lot of artsy space projects. It's one of the few that I actually follow and pay attention to, like, all the sex I've ever had, and also some of their history as well. Um, with uh, the time they moved the mountain a few feet. I don't know if you know about that, but it was, they got loads of people together and everyone just did like one shovel to the left. And they like, well, I say a mountain, like a big hill and just kind of moved it a little bit. And that sort of thing of human interaction and human power. And I love the making content and uh, a theater, like a theater performance almost through human nature and interaction. And it's, it's really fun. And, the awkwardness lends itself to a slight comedical slant as well, and I really enjoy it. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for meeting with me today and chatting about this stuff. Uh, I can't wait to see the performance in a few weeks. Yeah, have a lovely day. Thank you very much.